Welcome back, everybody. Uh, it's me and Dan here again today. Um, and Dan actually offered me a little bit of a challenge this time around. So kind of as a new player in Magic the Gathering, uh, he kind of put forward just test my skills, I guess, and just card games what in general, yeah. and see whether I could pick out some of possibly the most garbage cards ever made, or just cards that have absolutely terrible effects. Just, this is, I mean, there's so many cards to choose from that like, this is solely objective in terms of what I was able to find in the 15 minutes I did research. Um, <laughs> but then I've also offered the same back to Dan, just to kind of see whether he could uh, come up with some of his yeah. own cards. And uh, definitely this wasn't watching me over my shoulder as I yeah. was doing it. But um, yeah. There was one thing actually in the lead up to this. Rather annoyingly, Carl was in the office, he was saying, why did you put three elves? <laughs> Absolute knob, any. But there you go. You and your elves. I love me some elves, it's my new thing. Uh, I don't know, man, maybe you shouldn't tell everybody that. Uh, your search history is but, completely yeah, your own, you don't need to let anybody know See, about what, it. See, what I've trickily done is like people think, that, oh, he's searching Lord of the Rings because ah, he's interested yeah, in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's no. Not, yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely not. Love me um, some glass. So yeah, totally subjective here rather than <laughs> objective. So if you guys can think of any cards that are actually worse than these, uh, please let us know in the comments below. Uh, we'll definitely make sure to look at these and take your opinions into consideration next time, 100%. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, right, we'll get straight into it with some of the cards I picked. Uh, first card, very, very simple. I know this is a pretty bad card just in general, and I've even seen the artwork for it before because I, like, you know, I exist in the sphere of like card games. I've seen some things before. And uh, this card is notoriously bad, one with nothing. Yeah, yeah. so like, just uh, what? Black mana, discard your hand. Isn't that what you want to do? Just pay. Yeah, you want to pay, pay resources to get yeah, rid of all your resources. I mean, you, you totally, absolutely want to just waste your resources to go seriously negative in card advantage. Yeah. Um, I know there's like probably some sort of niche kind of thing that uses it in order to like put stuff in the graveyard. Or, sorry. Yeah. The, uh, graveyard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, <laughs> big fan of the game. You think not the graveyard? Sorry. I'm just you know, there's so many different terms and stuff like that. And yeah. then every once in a while, my brain will go back to Yu-Gi-Oh, and it's like, oh no, don't. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of when you, when you <laughs> think of Yu-Gi-Oh, you basically get like mush. Yeah. yeah, yeah mush so, in your head. Yeah. See, so, yeah, like this card, like, everybody's thought about putting it into Dredge, which of course you want to get cards into your graveyard. But even now, <laughs> this card is so bad. It's like. Even a deck that wants to put cards in his graveyard does not want this card, even though it's like, there is no better mana cost for this kind of effect than one mana, and like, yeah, still it, don't want it. Even if it was free, like, just, yeah, yeah. which is, yeah. yeah but there is no deck, maybe there's a deck in Legacy, but even in Legacy you still wouldn't play this deck, it's not powerful enough, but there is no deck that doesn't cast a card from its hand, or do something from its hand. Yeah, I mean, we, like, it's just, it's just terrible, and like, even your man's face on the card art is just kind of like... I don't even know what the art is, I know you got it there. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. just he's just also very unhappy with the state yeah. of things. So, uh, he's just not happy about it. It's like, yeah, what yeah, is yeah. going on here? <laughs> yeah, this is just absolutely nonsense. Yeah, that card is just like it is awful. That is actually a good choice for uh, yeah. one of the worst cards ever printed because that's that an easy one. I've seen seen that before. Uh, yeah, I, I know about uh, one with nothing. Uh, next one, a little bit more research. Uh, I have to like think about this one a little bit. Uh, Juju Bubble. Um, Throw back to one of their more recent videos, I guess we've done, uh, where we were talking about some of the worst mechanics and stuff like that. I saw uh, cumulative upkeep. Ah, uh, one of the worst. Right, yeah. this is already going to be terrible, but this one is well, like one second because this one cumulative upkeep can be amazing or absolutely awful. So this is a big challenge for yourself here. You what really do you think? Um, yeah, sometimes it can be great, but sometimes it's really bad. Well, <laughs> like Juju Bubble, cumulative upkeep, just one of any color. Uh, if you play a card, bury Juju Bubble, uh, and then two mana gain one life. Is that it? That's it, yeah. That's all it does. There's not a nice <laughs> little quote down there at the bottom, something about like being in love and Joy or something. Oh, that like. is yeah. lovely. We're not in love with this card. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, what yeah, a nice pretty bad. Uh, two mana gain one life seems like a terrible effect. Yeah, um, you can literally pay two mana. You can even pay one mana, one green mana in green. I think if you gain like five life or something like that. Yeah. But, uh, it's an instant, so you don't retain the card, but this has cost you one extra mana every upkeep. So it's like yeah. one mana, two, two mana. mana. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, it's... eventually you get to like, essentially it is um, like the turn afterwards. It's like three mana to gain one life. Yes. Yeah. So this is really bad. Also, because apparently that's not bad enough. Okay, right. Paying one extra mana every turn or two mana and three mana, and then paying two mana to gain one life is is not bad enough. If you play a card, you have to bury it, which is probably the best bit of text on there because you want to get rid of this card as soon yeah, as possible. Yeah, yeah. Next card I picked, uh, just something that seems a little bit ridiculous. Um, I've never seen this card. So this is called uh, this. This card is Goblin Firebug. Um, okay. So one red and then one of any color. Uh, it is a two-two creature. 
Yep. Uh, it's a bear. Okay. When Goblin Firebug leaves play, sacrifice a land. <laughs> um, so, so you're you're paying two to get a two two, and then when it leaves the field, yeah, you're sacrificing one of I your like, resource generators. Yeah. <laughs> so, so like already that pretty bad to me. Yeah, two mana for a two two a bear is like actually a bear might even be bigger than that. But anyway, whatever. Um, a, a two mana for a two two even in the lowest format like draft, like yeah. where almost anything is somewhat acceptable as a last pick. Even then, but that is like bare minimum. That's a curve, right? Like, I mean, yeah. you're, you're on two it, it, for it's two, two. Yeah, like, it fills yeah. up the rest of the year. You need something in red, It's you pick it out of the last pack, okay. A two mana for a two two is barely acceptable. It'd be a last pick in draft or something like that. Adding on that extra bit of text, because apparently two mana two two isn't low enough <laughs> to sacrifice on. Bear in mind, this is the battlefield, so if your opponent like flickers it, so like even if they don't kill it, it flickers it and they like it bounces and comes back straight away. Yeah, you sacrifice you're still a sacrificing land. a land. Yeah. yeah. If they exile it rather than killing it, sacrifice a land. land. Yeah, it's just like, what? Yeah, it <laughs> seems pretty gross. I don't know why like why? Why would I mean, they why would they be printed with such a restriction? The only thing I could think of is if um if there was a land printed which said when this land dies or something like yeah, that, yeah. Um, then deal 20 damage to an opponent or something like that, and it had indestructible, so you could sacrifice it, which gets around indestructible. Even, even then, you need a two card combo, and it would be that that card would never get printed for a start. Yeah, that, but, that, yeah. that just seems like a completely utterly broken like. Yeah, like something that would never. Yeah, yeah. yeah and mechanic. even then, it wouldn't be like the most broken thing ever printed. I just in don't magic. get why. It just seems like because it's like. Restrictions usually are put on the cards that like could yeah, be like, broken. Yeah, white headed mannequin. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. This just isn't even that. Even by standards, if you were to compare it to now, that's it's pretty bad for a two mana two two. Even back in the day, that wasn't really that good. It was yeah. even back going back quite a few years, which is obviously this is not all that style art. So this is really bad. I can't fathom why this would think... have been printed. My turn. <laughs> this is what I've got. So, shall I grab the, the panel? Yeah, like yeah. I know you've it. seen some of these already, mm -hmm. but the first one, break open. So I know you've okay. seen this one already. Two mana, instant, turn target face down creature and opponent controls face up. So, shall I explain what a face down creature is or anything like that? Well, it exists in Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, oh. it's like set face down. Its effects aren't like active or anything like that. No, it's and a, yeah. it, it basically just exists there. It can be used for certain things, but yeah. like very, very few things. It's more of kind of like, the surprise of what this card could be. Um, or some yeah. monsters have like flip effects that only happen when you flip them face up and stuff like that. But it's pretty similar to what this okay. is. So, yeah, um, so basically, um, I can't remember, I think it's called Morph. And you can pay three mana, um, put a card from your hand face down. Yeah. Your opponent's obviously it, and it's a 2 2. Just a 2 2. Okay. And then when you flip it up, just like with Yu Gi Oh!, exactly the same thing. Okay. So the thing is, <laughs> why this card is probably really bad is when you turn a card face up, just like with you, go. You're going to get an effect. You're going to yeah. get some kind of good effect. Occasionally, it might not even like in Yu-Gi-Oh. It, it, it's just something like very yeah. specific, like creatures have or monsters have like flip effects. Otherwise, yeah. you just flip them up and they don't necessarily do anything. Yeah. yeah. So uh, with magic, usually I can't think of any instance. And again, please leave me a comment down below, guys, if this doesn't apply. But almost always, when you flip a card face up from being face it down, it has a purpose. It has. It okay. does something. Even if the creature just gets bigger. Yeah. yeah. It has. It does something. So, break open is two mana to help your opponent because usually them flipping yeah, their card I mean, up. Yeah, flip and if yeah, flipping up is like yeah. good. Yeah, that's that's weird. helping them. So like this is literally two mana, literally like hurt yourself. That just seems like a pretty bad card. It just doesn't it's really, really make sense. <laughs> like I mean, I guess like there are cards. There are, there are cards. Very infamous card, Book of Moon in Yu-Gi-Oh. That's like. It used to be a really, really good card because it was the complete opposite effect of that. It was like not trying to face up monster face down, and that would stop them from. I can see how that would be good. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good, and you can see why the if that was the effect, like to I don't know, like because I don't know if that is an effect in Magic where you can flip like something face down. Like I think there are things that do that. Yeah, because yeah. like that seems like a pretty good effect because you're removing their effects like that. They can't yeah. activate them and then whatever. But flipping it up seems weird. It also seems really niche. Yeah, like the only advantage of it is that like you can literally see what that creature is before you make any like decisions on it. Yeah. But even then, it's just like you would probably know. But then you're going, you're going negative in resources to look at something. Look at something. Yeah, not even knowledge. Hand. Yeah, not yeah. even like not, not even like capitalize on it, just to yeah. gain more Plus, knowledge about board state. Let's move on to another one, mm -hmm. and this one is actually from Zendikar, which is not a set from that long ago relative to some of these other cards, and yeah. I can't believe how bad this card is. 
and you should get this one because you know about tempo and stuff like that yeah. with other card games. So Razor Boomerang, three mana for this uh, this equipment, two mana to equip. You can the equipped creature has tap the equipped creature, unattach Razor Boomerang from that creature. It deals one damage to target creature or player, but then you have to return Razor Boomerang back to its owner's hand. What? So like, hang on. So you, <laughs> you, okay, so you're getting it. Then let me read that. Have a look. There you right, go. So okay. So it's three mana to play it, then two mana to equip it. So you're five mana down already. Yeah, then you <laughs> tap the equipped creature. So it, it becomes tapped then. Yes. Yeah, so and then you unattach Razor Boomerang and get to deal one damage to a target creature or player. Yeah. And then you return Razor Boomerang to the owner's hand. So then you have to go to the whole to the whole process of going down yeah. five mana to, to get it again, back to and, get, and assume you still have a creature so soul. yeah so what, you're, what? that's really <laughs> bad. So bad that's really like, bad I mean, even just put out that three mana plus two mana to equip for one that's damage five mana for a ping like, yeah that's five mana good. for a ping at best yeah and like so again just like the card earlier with um, the uh, juju bubble yeah like, the, the fact that it returns it back to your hand like even without that text it's really it's bad. It's still pretty bad. Like, and like, but add that text onto it. We're talking about one of the worst equipments ever printed. It is just like, even awful. Uh, okay, so no, because yeah, that's too much. Like that's like five mana. Yeah, five mana to like get it onto something, and then you have to tap the creature to deal a ping damage. Yeah, I mean, maybe they're like five damage or something like that. Okay, yeah, yeah, well, then yeah. we could be talking. Kill a creature is probably worth the tempo, but one damage. Added. That's pretty. Terrible. That like, is not great, is it? I mean, I, I I don't know enough about the game to be able to be like, oh well, like I mean, there are better cards and stuff. But I feel like there would definitely be a better card that's just. I get, I know it's like technically like infinitely recurring because yeah. like as long as you have a creature to equip it to. Yeah, I mean, you can keep dealing one damage. So I guess you've set a timer on your opponent. Yeah, like aha, twenty turns from now, you will be dead. <laughs> you know, it's like this, this. This is gonna be another one. Dan's really bad analogies. <laughs> but here we go again. Razor Boomerang is like setting off from like the UK or from Germany where we are now. It doesn't really matter. From somewhere in Europe and saying, I'm gonna walk to Australia. But eventually we're going to get there, yeah. but it's going to take a long time. It's going to take a long time and it's going to take a lot of like investment and resources because you're going to have to stay somewhere. And then, uh, you know <laughs> what, at the end of the day it probably would have just been quicker and sure more upfront costs, but yeah. definitely uh, yeah. definitely would have got there in a more timely fashion and you wouldn't have yeah. bored everyone to death. Mm -hmm. So the last card here, and this one is really bad. Okay. Like this one might be the worst here. Maybe might be as bad, not be quite as bad as uh, Break Open. Or one with, in fact, it's, no, it's probably as bad as the rest of them. All right, hit me with it. Yeah, on. Wood Elemental. So um, when it enters the battlefield, three in a green. Okay, okay. creature with X or Star Star as its um, power and toughness. Okay, I'll explain what Star Star is in a second. It will be pretty obvious as we okay. go through the card. When it enters the battlefield, you can sacrifice any amount of untapped forest you control. Okay. okay. It's up to you how many you sacrifice. And it enters the battlefield, and its power and toughness, which is uh, star star, is equal to the amount of untapped forest you sacrifice this way. So first of all... That's a really hard neg though, right? That's, like, that's a massive... Yeah. You have to sacrifice mana yeah, to play yeah. a... Well, let's just assume, okay. Let's just assume you, you play this on turn four, okay? Yeah. Right, because um, you know you want to be casting stuff on curve, and four mana is quite high for many formats. You play this on turn four. First of all, it comes down and it dies straight away if you've tapped all of your lands, because it's untapped forests. Yeah. So like, first you need to have five mana at least, with one of them being an untapped forest to even cast this. Well, can you definitely like, can you definitely cast it even if they are like, untapped? Well, you can cast it, it'll just die because it says you have Is to sacrifice. It? Can you actually do that? That's kind of funny. Yeah, you can tap, well no, you can tap all your lands and yeah, yeah. to produce mana, but you cast it because you've got mana to cast the yeah, card. Yeah, yeah. And then when, you, when it comes down, it oh, says- you can actually do that? That's not considered like, I don't know, an illegal no, no. activation or no, something you, like that? No, it comes down- It's kind of funny. Yeah, it just come down as a zero zero and yeah. die straight away. So okay. um, yeah, so basically it's a, it's a four mana zero zero unless you have excess untapped forests, exactly forests, which you then have to sacrifice yeah. to uh, even grow it to a one one. So um, it is you have to give it resources to get something that is really not bad. For comparison, mm -hmm. a card printed a classic card from Magic in the last few years uh, from Cards of Tarkay called Siege Rhino, which is a bit harder to cast because it's uh, one. A white, a black, and a green. Okay. So reasonably hard to cast. It's a 4-5 for 4 mana. 
and when it enters the battlefield, you drain your opponent for three and you gain three life. So, same kind of mana curve area. It's pretty good, though, yeah. like, I guess. Like, not amazing or anything, but like, it's a solid... Oh, no, Siege Rider was broken in standard. Was it? Well, uh, broken might be going a bit far, but... Okay, yeah. But, like, it, it was a format-defining card in cool. standard. And it, yeah. yeah, it is a... It was a... Yeah. I mean, it's steep, steep cost, but, like, pretty good effect. Pretty yeah. good, like, stats well, for curve, I guess. Yeah, you, I mean, you need to remember standard is a little bit slower. Whereas, yeah. I mean, Siege Rider never sees playing modern or faster formats yeah, yeah, like okay, that. Yeah. But, yeah, um... I mean, obviously, you would never play this Wood Elemental in any... Anything. <laughs> anything. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Helps us, obviously, with the algorithm, and also just makes us realize that uh, you guys actually like the content that we're working on, and helps us make more similar stuff, if that's what you're looking for. So, thank you for watching, and bye.